I have done a lot of budget meal content over the years here on See Mindy Mom, like a lot, like a lot, a lot, like dozens of videos with different price points, different parameters, different kinds of meals that I was making, different stores that I was shopping at. I have an entire playlist of those linked in the description box below if you're interested in checking them out. But given all the talk about rising prices in food and inflation, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at one of my most popular budget meal videos and see, is it still possible today. I filmed a video probably a little over six months ago. I think actually it was close to nine months ago because it's December. Now we're getting on towards the end of the year. In fact, by the time you see this, it might be 2022. I'm not really sure when this is going to go up. We'll see. But I filmed this video, I think it was in March or April, sometime last spring, so eight or nine months ago, and it was really popular. It's actually the second most popular video on my channel. It was called Aldi $3 Dinners, and basically I shopped at Aldi. I spent about $10. I showed you exactly what I purchased it and exactly how I turned those ingredients into three delicious meals for my family. And I'll admit, I was pretty proud of that one because I thought I did a fairly decent job of including vegetables, of cooking from scratch, of making meals that were palatable, that people would really enjoy, and having them all be different and not just the same thing over and over again. You know what I mean? So I was in Aldi recently filming another video and I thought I would take a look at what those ingredients would cost today and tell you how much it would cost if I was making that video today, nine months later, and also give some suggestions for what I might do differently. I actually changed up the meal plan a little bit and I made a different meal than one of the meals that I made in that video originally and I'm going to show you how I did that. So if you are the primary grocery shopper in your household, you have probably noticed that prices have been going up and a very hasty and quite frankly probably insufficient Google search just now showed me that prices have gone up somewhere between five and six percent across the board in the U.S. for food. But it doesn't seem like that really paints the whole picture because there are some items that have skyrocketed, namely meat, chicken, dairy, eggs, and actually surprisingly coffee and sugar. Those are the items that have gone up the most, as opposed to some other items that have remained pretty stable and still some decent deals to be had on things like seasonal produce. For instance, my very hasty and probably very poor research showed me that beef, chicken, pork have gone up anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, depending on where you live and where you shop. This article cited that eggs had gone up somewhere around 19 to 20 percent, and one article article that I read showed that bacon had risen 28% in price in the last year. Now some inflation I think is normal and my very hasty probably poor research showed me that somewhere between 1 to 1.5% per year is sort of a normal rate of inflation on food across the board. Again some things might go up more, some things might go up less or not at all. And I definitely saw this whenever I was checking out the items that I used in that challenge. Now as opposed to nine months ago whenever I purchased them. For that challenge, I purchased seven items. I purchased a two pound bag of carrots, a 16 ounce container of sour cream, one box of flavored stuffing mix, one can of green beans, one bag of frozen green beans, one package of dry egg noodles, and then one fryer chicken, like one whole chicken that I actually cooked in the crock pot and I used that across all the meals and used the bones to make broth for some of the other meals. All of that cost me $9.59 back then whenever I made the video, but I also made a point to say that one thing that I did not purchase was a can of cream of chicken soup because I was going to make mine from scratch. So that if you had purchased that at that time, it would have added 50 cents to the total, which would have made the total for that particular meal plan $10.09. Now, as I was moving around the grocery store, checking out the prices on some of these items, I really didn't notice a huge difference and some of the items were the same price, like the egg noodles, the frozen green beans, the chicken had gone up two cents per pound. So instead of it being 95 cents per pound, it was 97 cents per pound. And I even found a fryer chicken that was about the same size as the one that I used. It was actually about 30 cents less than the one that I had purchased in that video. The two things that I noticed had really gone up in price were the carrots, which I had originally purchased for 99 cents are now $1.59 in my Aldi for a two pound bag. And the sour cream, which is now $1.55 for a 16 ounce container, I think was only 89 cents back whenever I filmed this almost a year ago. So I felt like that was fair. And when I added it all up, it would have cost me $11.03 to make that meal plan again using the exact same ingredients. So that is a rise of about 10% for me to make the same meal plan without making any changes. Now, that being said, there are some things that I would probably do differently this time around, and I can actually change up this meal plan to still be within that original $10 budget for all three meals. Now, this is the part where I say that I did use some things that I already had on hand, like some basic seasoning 
seasonings. I think I used some onions and garlic. I had some staple ingredients that I used across all of these recipes. And so I tried to create a, a slightly different meal plan without having to change that particular part. I think I used an onion, some garlic, some salt and pepper, and some Italian seasoning. I think those were kind of the basic staples that I used to create the meal plan that I did. So I've shared with you the items that I purchased and it was seven items plus an eighth item if you didn't want to make cream of chicken from scratch. And with those items, I cooked the chicken in the crock pot. I took the chicken off the bone and then I used the bones to make broth for other meals as well. And the three meals that I created were a homemade chicken noodle soup, a chicken and stuffing casserole that I called Thanksgiving in a bowl, and a chicken stroganoff that I served over the egg noodles. The chicken noodle soup was delicious. We had made the broth from scratch and I even pureed some of the vegetables we had used to make the broth, which gave it this really rich, creamy texture. We also really liked the chicken stroganoff that we made. The recipe that I was not super enamored with was the Thanksgiving in a bowl with the stuffing and it was good. I'm just not a huge stuffing fan. So I have been thinking for a while that I should rework this meal plan and come up with a different third meal. So that is what I have done. I'm trying to film this over Christmas break and there are children yelling in the driveway, which is fine. They need to be outside playing. And somebody has decided to mow their lawn, even though it's December the 28th. I would not have thought lawn mowers would be an issue for me filming in December. <laughs> So here's what I would do now. I would still buy the chicken, the sour cream, and the two pound bag of carrots. I would not buy the stuffing, the egg noodles, the frozen green beans, the canned green beans, or the cream of chicken. And instead, I would purchase a can of tomatoes and a three pound bag of rice. That is the smallest amount of just plain standard rice that you can purchase at Aldi. It is $1.89 for a three pound bag. And three pounds of rice goes a really long way. So since I didn't buy the noodles, I would turn the chicken noodle soup into a chicken and rice soup. So instead of using about a third of that bag, I think I used four to six ounces of egg noodles to make that soup. I would use one to two cups of rice depending on how many people you are wanting to feed. You might need to add more water since rice will soak up more of the broth and maybe just offset it with a little bit more seasoning. But a chicken and rice soup, I think would work just as well. And it actually might be more filling. I would still make the chicken stroganoff just as I did in the video, except instead of serving it over egg noodles, I would serve it over rice. And I had purchased the canned green beans as a vegetable side for that meal. But since I'm buying two pounds of carrots, I can use the rest of the carrots that I don't use in the soup and in making the chicken in the crock pot and roast them in the oven to go along alongside that chicken stroganoff meal, which was delicious. Now for the third meal, I was trying to think of something that was slightly different from those other two meals, but still utilize those ingredients plus the same standard kitchen staple ingredients that I had used for the challenge. Remember just onions and garlic, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. So I decided that I would use the tomatoes and the rice along with the chicken to create a sort of Italian style chicken and rice dish. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. So as I stated, if I was redoing this challenge today, I would still make the chicken in the crock pot. I would still make the chicken broth just as I did in the original video. And I would still make the chicken soup. I would just make it a chicken and rice soup instead of chicken noodle soup. And I would make the chicken stroganoff, which was delicious just as I did. I would just serve it over rice instead of over noodles. This is the recipe that I would change. And I'm going to turn it into kind of like an Italian style chicken and rice. So I'm gonna use my can of tomatoes, about a cup and a half of that white rice. I'm gonna use some onion, which I did use in the original video challenge and then some of the seasonings that I used in the original challenge as well. Just some Italian seasoning and salt and pepper to taste. I also raided my little packet drawer to see what I had in there and I found some crushed red pepper flake and some Parmesan cheese. I am going to use one of those little packets of crushed red pepper. Those come in handy for these kinds of recipes. I usually save them whenever we get them from restaurants and pizza places. I'm starting out by sauteing my onion in a little bit of olive oil. You could use butter, you could use vegetable oil, you could skip this step entirely and just go to adding everything to the pot to bring it to a simmer. I also like to brown my rice in recipes like this because I feel like it just enhances the flavor and it improves the texture of the rice once it has cooked. So I browned that with the olive oil and the onion for a couple of minutes before adding the rest of my ingredients. And that was my can of tomatoes, about three and a half to four cups of water. I used about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and salt and pepper to taste in my little packet of crushed red pepper flake. As I stated, you can adjust the seasonings according to what you have and what you like. Since I did not redo 
this entire challenge from the beginning. I'm just using a little bit of shredded chicken that I had in the refrigerator left over from another meal. But if you were doing this entire challenge, you would of course use some of the chicken that you cooked in the crock pot from the whole chicken. And I'm putting that into the pot along with everything else and stirring it together. I brought that to a simmer and then I covered it and I turned the heat down to low. And I let this cook for about 10 to 12 minutes on low. And then I turned the heat off, but I leave the lid on. Whenever I am making rice dishes like this, I find that this is a really great way to let the rice finish cooking without it burning to the bottom of the pan. So after I turn the heat off, I leave the lid on for about seven or eight minutes, and then I take the lid off and the rice is finished cooking, and I just stir it once again to combine everything, and it is ready to serve. And this was really good. It was really flavorful. It was a really good, just kind of a different take on a standard chicken and rice recipe. And I just made it the very basic way, but you could add a little bit of cheese, a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I ate it left over the next day with a little cottage cheese and it was absolutely delicious. So if I were to make those changes in the purchases and make those slight adjustments with the chicken soup and the chicken stroganoff and then make that third chicken and Italian rice dinner instead, the total cost for me, according to what I saw in the grocery store the day that I was there last week, would be $10.04. I think that's not too shabby, right? It does take a little bit of work. You know, you've got to cook the chicken in the crock pot, but that was one of those things where I did that all day and then I had the meat for the rest of the meals and then I used the rest of the chicken to make the broth and the meals were so delicious delicious because everything was made from scratch. But I thought it would just be interesting to go back and rework this meal plan and see if this is still possible. And in my world, at least it is. I am no stranger to the fact that food varies in cost, sometimes greatly from place to place. I can only compare according to where I am. I can compare the prices today where I am to the prices six months ago where I am, three months before that, a year before that. So that was the purpose of this exercise was just to see if this is still possible, what I would change and maybe give you some ideas. That is what I am hoping with this channel is that I can give you ideas and that I can be a calm, non-anxious presence for you guys. So thanks so much for watching and I will be sure to check in again with more videos. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm super excited about what I have coming for January. I have lots of easy meals, shortcut meals, budget meals, pantry cooking meals, all of your favorite kinds of content coming your way. So make sure that you are subscribed and you have that notification bell click so you know when I'm releasing new videos. See you soon.